How to pet a cat? Petting a cat may sound simple, but for children or people who haven't spent much time around cats, it's important to know the do's and don'ts of approaching and touching a cat. Petting in the wrong spot or using too much force or speed can agitate some cats, causing them to bite or scratch. Experts recommend letting it happen on the cat's terms, seek permission to touch them, and let the cat have control over the interaction. There are a few places where it's hard to go wrong. Areas where cats have scent glands are perfect for petting. Spreading their scent imbues their environment with a familiar smell, which in turn makes them feel happy and content. Knowing where to touch, and when to stay away, can help ensure that both of you enjoy a little cat-human contact. Part 1. Focusing on areas with scent glands. Step 1. Start with a soft chin scratch. Use your fingertips or fingernails to gently rub the chin, particularly where the jawbone connects to the skull. It's possible the cat will push into your stroke or jut out his, her chin, both signs of enjoyment. Step 2. Focus on the area between or behind the ears. Use the pads of your fingers and apply gentle pressure. The base of the ears is another scent marking spot for cats. If s, he bumps his, her head against you, called, bunting, s, he's marking you as hers. Step 3. Pet the cat's cheeks just behind the whiskers. If the cat likes this, s, he may rotate his, her whiskers forward, effectively asking for more. Step 4. Run the back of your hand gently along the side of the face. Once the cat is warmed up, use your middle finger to stroke the cat's mustache just above the upper lips, while encircling his, her whole face and stroking the top of the head with your thumb. The cat is yours. Step 5. Stroke the cat from forehead to tail. Pet the forehead, then run your hand from forehead to the base of the tail, going from head to tail repeatedly. Massage his, her neck muscles by pinching gently. Apply gentle pressure and make it a continuous, slow motion. Work only in one direction, forehead to tail, as some cats do not like back to front strokes. Don't touch the tail or move your hand along to the side. If the cat likes what you're doing, s, he'll arch his, her back to add more pressure to your hand. When you bring your hand back to where you started, the cat may rub her forehead firmly against your hand to encourage you to do it again. If the cat puts her ears back, cowers away from your hand, or just walks away, stop petting. You can scratch gently as you bring your hand down along the cat's back, but don't stop at one spot and scratch there. Keep your hand moving. Apply a little pressure at the base of the tail, though with caution. This is another scent gland area, and there are cats that like getting scratched right here. Others, however, have a habit of suddenly snapping their teeth at your hand when they've had enough. Part 2. Letting the cat come to you. Step 1. Let the cat sniff you before you pet it so it can become comfortable with you. Extend a hand or finger and allow the cat a chance to touch his, her nose to you. If s, he shows no interest in your hand or just stares at it suspiciously, reconsider your intention to pet her. Try some other time when the cat may be in a different mood. If the cat sniffs your hand, meows, and then rubs her chin or the side of his, her head against it, or brushes the side of his, her body on you, chances are s, he is open to being touched. Open the palm of your hand and softly touch her body. Step 2. Wait for the cat to bump his, her head against you. When a cat bumps his, her head into your hand, it's a signal s, he wants attention. If you are busy at the moment, 
at least pet her once or twice, to let the cat know you aren't ignoring his, her. Step 3. Pet the cat once if s, he jumps into your lap and lies down. C if s, he fidgets. If s, he does. It may be that s, he just wants to lie there and relax. As humans are a great source of body heat. If s, he doesn't fidget, you can continue to lightly stroke his, her spine or in the spots described in part 2. Step 4. Stroke a cat when s, he's on her side. Cats love to be petted when they are on their sides. Lightly stroke the side that is facing up. If it meows or purrs, it may be communicating enjoyment. Avoid the belly. Step 5. Understand how your cat communicates. The cat makes some low audible sounds, called purring. Purring is one way a cat signals that it feels sociable and wants attention. When accompanied by hip bumps, ankle twining or head bumping, it means your cat wants you to pet it right now. Sometimes one stroke is all the cat wants, like a handshake or a greeting, rather than a long hug and snuggle session. The loudness of a cat's purring denotes its happiness level. The louder the purring is, the happier the cat is at the time. A soft purr means that it is content, a loud purr means very happy. Excessively loud purring means over excessive happiness, which can sometimes switch quickly to annoyance, so be careful. Step 6. Watch for signs that the cat does not want to be petted anymore. Sometimes even petting that feels good to the cat can become overstimulating or irritating, particularly if it is repetitive. If you're not paying attention, the sign to stop may come in the form of a soft, inhibited bite or scratch. Often, however, the cat gives several subtle signals before biting that he, she does not want to be petted anymore. Look for these advance warnings, and if you see them, stop petting, ears flattening against the head, tail twitching, fidgeting, growling or hissing. Part 3. Learning what to avoid. Step 1. Keep your petting from the head to the tail and don't switch directions. Some cats do not like getting stroked from tail to head. Step 2. Don't pat the cat. Some cats enjoy it, but some don't, and if you're not used to being around cats, you're better off not experimenting unless you want to risk a bite or scratch. Step 3. Stay away from the belly. When cats are relaxed, they might roll onto their back and expose their belly. Don't always take this as an invitation to rub their tummy, as many cats don't like that at all. This is because in nature cats must be careful to protect themselves from potential predators, as opposed to dogs, who are more confident in this regard, and love having their bellies scratched. The stomach is a vulnerable area where all the vital organs are located, so lots of cats will instinctively bare teeth and claws if touched here. Some cats do like it, but they interpret it as an invitation to play rough or wrestle with claw grabbing and scratching. They'll wrap their claws around your hand or arm, bite it, and scratch at it vigorously with their front and back paws. This is not always an attack, it's how some cats wrestle. If a cat grabs you with its paws, hold still and let the cat disengage his, her claws. If necessary, reach over with your other hand and gently pull the paw back to unhook the claws. Cats often scratch deep when they don't intend to if their claws get stuck. They use claws to hold and grab, so when the message is for you to stop moving your hand, they'll stop if you stop. Step 4. Approach the feet with caution. Don't play with a cat's feet unless you know the cat well and know s, he likes having him, her feet played with. Start just by petting the cat to get him, her relaxed. 
then ask permission to stroke him, her feet by touching one foot once with your finger. Many cats don't like their feet handled at all, but can be trained into it for activities like claw clipping through a slow, successive reward system. If the cat doesn't object, lightly pet that foot with one finger in the direction the fur flows, from wrist toward toes. At any point the cat pulls his, her foot away, hisses, flattens his, her ears or walks away, stop. Some tips you want to know. Petting a cat can release stress reducing relaxation hormones, lower your blood pressure, and reduce your chances of heart attack or stroke. If you are massaging or scratching your cat when it's lying down, it may stretch out, if it isn't already, to show that it is comfortable with what you are doing. This is often accompanied with purring. The cat also may smile by squinting its eyes at you. This is a sign that your cat is enjoying the current attention from you. Purring is not always an indication that a cat is happy, so don't make the mistake of thinking that a purring cat will not snap or bite. Many believe purring to be an indication that a cat is communicating, pay attention to this, which might be because the cat is happy, but it may also indicate annoyance. Some cats like it when you rub his, her ear. If you gently massage the two folds of the ear together they will likely enjoy it. Be careful though, some cats do not like this. If the cat headbutts your hand, don't be scared. It wants to play. Cats like it when you scratch his, her cheeks gently. Some also like it when you gently stroke their nose with your finger. If you're a stranger to the cat, have some patience. Sometimes cats tolerate their owners, who are familiar to them, but not new people. If you see a cat's tail thumping around, its ears flashing back and forth, enlarged pupils, or tensed paws, stop petting it as the cat is becoming irritated and may bite or scratch you. Petting a cat makes you and your cat feel happy and comfortable. You should always approach the cat slowly and low to the ground. Most cats dislike it when you appear larger than them. Acknowledge whether your cat loves to be petted, stroked or scratched and know whether your cat doesn't feel comfortable with you petting or scratching. If it's your cat you're petting, it's a good idea to be sensitive to changes in her reaction to your established petting routine. An area that's normally okay to pet might become painful to the cat due to some new wound or other health condition. Your cat can meow or withdraw, or even scratch or bite, if you are petting a newly sensitive region. Outdoor cats are especially prone to abscesses due to encounters with other cats. If you discover a painful area or an abscess, take your cat to the vet. If you want a kitten you should know that, though they are cute, their bites and scratches are more painful than adult bites and scratches. Some cats meow when they want you to stop, and some meow when they want you to pet harder. A low-pitched meow may be indicative of anger. Generally, it's a good idea to stop, just in case. Many cats don't like being petted near the tail, to see if yours does or not, pet them there and if they flinch, hiss or meow uncomfortably or angrily, it is a warning to stop. Avoid touching the cat near that area, and warn guests to do the same. Some cats love to be picked up, while others don't. If a cat attempts to jump away from your hands, this is a signal that s, he doesn't want to be held at that moment. Warnings. Don't pet the cat if you have allergies. If you are wounded due to a serious bite or scratch, wash the affected area thoroughly with an antibacterial soap and apply an antiseptic. Then, seek medical assistance. Deep puncture wounds need medical attention because of the risk of serious infection. 
Children should be closely supervised when petting a cat. They can easily agitate him, her, causing the cat to bite or scratch. Cats that are friendly to adults are not always friendly to children. Be especially careful that children do not get their face too close to a cat. Don't pet a cat if it is uncomfortable. If the cat looks aggressive, stay away as it can cause injury through bites and scratches. Here is our video for today. Leave a comment below if you have your own helpful tips to share. Give a like if you find the video useful, and subscribe for more to come.